counts as strong evidence. For Bayes factors, quite a few people have tried to answer that, and you can see that they all came up with slightly different answers. That's all very well, but for the average user it's not clear which of these scales is the best one. Which is the most appropriate or the most objective? Let's look at Bayes' theorem again, how the prior odds are multiplied by the Bayes factor to get the posterior odds. If we take logs, then the evidence in the Bayes factor is additive on the log odds scale. Now we can relate the log odds to the probability using the logistic function. Recall that probability represents belief or plausibility. As the evidence is additive on the log odds, then the slope of the logistic function gives us the effect of evidence on belief. The black curve shown here is the logistic function. That shows how we convert the log odds to the probability. And the blue is the first derivative. That's the slope of the black curve. You can see that the effect of evidence is the greatest in the centre of the graph. That's where the log odds is zero, or the probability is one half. And the effect of evidence is least when the probability is near zero or one. So that's intuitive, isn't it? When your belief is neutral, that's at one half, that's when evidence has the greatest effect on your belief. If you're certain about things with a belief at zero or one, then that's where the evidence has the least effect. So we can make that a definition. Weaker belief is where there are stronger effects of evidence. Stronger belief is where there are weaker effects of evidence. Ideally, there might be a hard threshold between weaker and stronger belief. But we can't get that because the effect of evidence is changing continuously. But we could say, where does the effect of evidence change most rapidly? And that will be the sharpest distinction between weaker and stronger effects of evidence. And because we've made a correspondence between effects of evidence and belief, we can say that the sharpest distinction between weaker and stronger belief is where the effect of evidence is changing most rapidly. And that's shown by the dotted lines on the graph. That's where the effect of evidence, the blue curve, is changing most rapidly. That turns out to be at log odds of 1.317 or a probability of 0.789, just under 80%. So that is weaker and stronger belief. Now let's define one unit of evidence to be the minimum evidence that updates any weaker belief to a stronger belief. In other words, a log base factor of that same value, 1.317, so a base factor of 3.73. In general, if we have a base factor of x, we can say that is evidence equivalent to log base 3.73 of x equivalent to that many studies that each provide one unit of evidence. Having defined those units of evidence, we can now go back to our empirical Bayes factor and ask, supposing we have empirical Bayes factors at each of those units, what is the equivalent p-value? And it turns out that for the common tests we perform, the equivalent p-values are very similar to the classical levels of significance testing. One unit of evidence is a p-value a little bit lower than 0.05. For each further unit of evidence, we are reducing by roughly half of an order of magnitude. So this lines up very nicely with common practices. You could argue that we now have an evidential account of classical significance testing and an explanation of intuitions around significance levels. An empirical base factor of 1 corresponds to a p-value of around 0.2.
So we could say any p-value less than 0.2 is evidence against the null hypothesis, and anything greater than 0.2 is evidence in favour of the null hypothesis. Now, this is an objective scale for interpreting Bayes factors, and this in fact is a key reason to use the Bayes factor to measure evidence. It places our evidence within a rational account of inference. There are other approaches to quantifying evidence that people have proposed, including type 1 and type 2 errors, the frequentest error rates. They can be interpreted as a measure of evidence. Information criteria. You can take maximised likelihoods as measures of evidence. And there is a lot of good work exploring those, but none of those measures as yet have an objective scale of interpretation. And this is the key distinction between the Bayes factor as a measure of evidence and other approaches to measuring and quantifying evidence. Here we have this objective scale of interpretation. So putting it all together, we now have an objective framework for measuring and interpreting statistical evidence. Empirical Bayes factors are an objective measure which is compatible with parameter estimation and with units in log base 3.73 we have a rational scale for interpreting them. The academic paper is currently on the archive preprint server and there's an R package here that will calculate EBFs for you from test statistics.